Sure, it's great being a billionaire. With comes with the money comes the fame. You also have that adoration from all your fans. Your loved ones look at you in a different way, and the ones you never even thought you had a chance of being friends with or even in a relationship are always seem to be there. However, there's a dark side to being a billionaire because you have all that money and so much to do with it and so much can go wrong with it. Today, we're actually gonna be going over some billionaires who lost all their money and their downward spirals they took. What's going on guys, JT here with The Business Hub, coming at you with another video. Make sure to leave a big thumbs up on it, a comment, and let us know down below if you did subscribe by commenting you subscribed. That way you could be entered in our subscriber monthly giveaway where you shout out one lucky subscriber who does all of this, comments down below they subscribed, that way they could be entered in the giveaway. Guys, let's get into today's video, the nine billionaires who lose all their money. Coming in at our first spot, we have Bernie Madoff. He made off with tons of other people's money. Literally, it's in his last name, Madoff. Bernie Madoff entered the annals of financial history by swindling many wealthy people out of tens of billions of dollars in the largest Ponzi scheme in the US and pretty much I'd say the world's history. It's estimated that before he went to prison, sentenced to 150 years, he was worth about 17 billion. Not much of that remains however. The biggest lesson story offers us is to be very wary of hard to believe financial claims or promises. These type of Ponzi schemes are usually very very easy to believe because they ask you to invest a small amount amount of money at first hand. Eventually, if you are involved for a more than a year later, you're going to be investing thousands upon thousands of dollars. It starts off with a little $10 donation that they promise to grow to $100 and when they eventually do, they get your trust, they earn it and then you're hooked. You're going to have a lot of your money taken or made off with and in this case, that's what Mr. Madoff did. Here we have Ike Batista. He was at one point the richest man in Brazil. Ike Batista felt a long way. At his financial height, he was the richest man in Brazil, a nation with more than 200 million citizens. He made his money largely via Brazilian natural resource companies, but also carried a lot of debt. When the businesses crashed, so did his net worth falling from an estimated 35 billion to less than 300 million. That's more of a drop than 99% of the way, by the way. Interestingly enough, after a priest suggested to him, everything he had taken from the sea has to be returned in some way, and this could be done by a ritualistic gesture showing gratitude, Batista tossed gold coins worth them more than $150,000 into the ocean. But it's okay though, he has a little bit more than 200 million left, and he's living fine off over in Brazil. Next we have Elizabeth Holmes. She had a lot of bad blood, a lot of bad relationships, and she was actually praised in the press for years as the CEO of Theranos, an exciting startup that promised to revolutionize medical testing with inexpensive blood tests. However, there was one flaw in her plan. It takes a lot of money to execute these blood tests, and they're usually given for free, so there was really no money being made, and it was kind of like a scam. Her 50% stake in the company was worth an estimated $4.5 billion at one point, but Forbes magazine recently listed her net worth at zero. Allegations of fraud brought down Theranos and Holmes, followed by lawsuits and sanctions. Today, the rumor is she's actually living in a homeless shelter and has to scrape by every day to make it by. It's kind of revolutionizing and you know humbling that someone of this status was eventually taken down to the everyday citizen and worse than the everyday citizen, barely making it by in today's society. Here we have Michael Pearson. I guess raising prices wasn't enough. If you're familiar with Valiant Pharmaceuticals, you probably know that its stock crashed more than 80% in 2016 amid investigations and criminal charges against at least one former executive. You may not know much about its former CEO, Michael Pearson. He was a billionaire not so long ago, ranking in $182 million in composition in 2015 alone. But with Pearson at the helm, Valiant acquired dozens of companies, took on a lot of personal and company debt, and hiked prices of many drugs, a formula that didn't lead to great success. Pearson, meanwhile, was a billionaire on paper and made big donations to Duke University with borrowed money. It's safe to say that Duke and everyone else he's donated to is making great use of that imaginary money because it never really existed once he went into debt. Kind of hard to rebound from that, Mr. Pearson. Next we have Aubrey McClendon. He was brought down to foul play. If the name Aubrey McClendon is familiar, it's because he used to head up the successful Chesapeake Energy Company and its high-flying stock. 
That stock is down close to 90% from its peak though, and with its massive debt load, bankruptcy isn't out of the question. Despite a surprisingly profitable third quarter, Chesapeake's debt soared from 1 million to 13 billion between 2000 and 2010. McClendon died in a fiery car crash, coincidentally, in March of last year, setting off speculations of suicide because his indicted a day before the crash, charged with conspiring to rig bids. More recently, the death was seemed accidental. However, it was deemed purposely as McClendon did have a history of driving fast and recklessly. In 2011, McClendon's wealth was at an estimated $1.2 billion before Chesapeake stock imploded. A lesson here is that taking big risks and running up the score in massive debt can be crippling to one's own personal gains. Even with its personal investments, he used margin, investing his borrowed money, and faced many, many margin calls. Lastly, we have VJ Malaya. He is known as the king of good times. He isn't really a household name in the US, but he's quite well known in his native of India, where he was the wealthiest liquor baron and owned out the now out of business Kingfisher Airlines as well. He was reportedly worth about $1.5 billion at one point, but lost his fortune in due large part due to massive debts and lavish spending. This wasn't a debt or fraud incident. This was actually him not being able to control his funds. As authorities were actually getting close to charging him, he left the country all of a sudden. His passport has since been revoked. He's living in exile and authorities are attempting to extradite him. Malia's story reminds us that even when you have gobs of money, it's possible to overspend and that debt can ruin people at all levels. So guys, that's it for today's video. Let us know in the comment section down below which billionaire falling was the most surprising out of everyone. Also, make sure to leave a huge thumbs up on the video, comment down below, and let us know if you did subscribe by hitting that bell and commenting down below you subscribe so you could be entered in this month's subscriber giveaway. Guys, make sure to also leave a huge thumbs up as it does help us with likes. Let's reach 150 likes on today's video or more. If we can get more guys, I will have a special treat for you guys next video guys this is JT here with the business hub signing off and as always see you guys later